in this video, we're looking at how we can calculate a quarter number based on a date. Now, if our financial year is aligned to the calendar year, that's quite straightforward. But if it's not, let's say our year end is the end of August, suddenly things become a little bit tricky. Or even worse, what if we have a non-standard calendar, such as a 445 or a 454? How on earth are we gonna calculate the quarter number in that scenario? That's what we're gonna do in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here we are in Excel with our example data. You can see we have a list of dates in column A. And we just want to calculate what the quarter number is based on the calendar. So if our financial year is aligned to the calendar year, this is quite straightforward. You start off with equals month, open bracket, then we can select our cell A2 and press return. So this calculates a number for each month. We then want to divide that by three. It's three because we want to have quarters. There's 12 months in a year, so to get quarters, we divide into three. Then all we need to do is to wrap this in the round up function, round up, open bracket, and we want this to zero decimal places. We'll close that bracket, and now let's convert that to a number. And you can see that we have quarter one. If we copy that down, we now have the quarter numbers for each of these dates. If you want to add a Q at the front, we can do that quite simply, just in double quotes, adding a Q and then an ampersand, and that now gives us the quarter number for each of our dates based on the calendar year. Now, what happens if our financial year is not aligned to the calendar year? For example, let's say our year end is the end of August. In that scenario, September, October, November is Q1, December, January, February is Q2, March, April, May is Q3, and June, July, August is Q4. How can we calculate the quarter number in that scenario? Well, let's take a look. Here in cell C2, we're going to start by using the EO month function. So equals EO month. EO month stands for end of month. I'll open the bracket and then we'll use cell A2. Now, August is our year end, so that's the eighth calendar month, but we want that to be the 12th month. Therefore, the second argument that we're going to use in the EO month function is four. That means we'll offset the eighth month to become the 12th month. We can then wrap that in the month function. We then divide by three as before, and finally we wrap this in the round up function. And we round that to zero decimal places, and now that calculates our quarter numbers based on a year end of the 31st of August. So all you need to do if you've got a different date is adjust that number inside the EO month function to represent how much you need to uplift your month number by so it then becomes the 12th month. Now let's turn to the scenario where we might have a non-standard calendar. We've got no idea when a month will start or finish. So what we do in this scenario is use a calendar table. You can see the calendar table here. We have our period start date and then what period or month number that relates to. So we're going to start here in cell D2 and create a lookup equals X lookup. And we want to look up cell A2 from our period start date and return the period number. Now, if a value isn't found, let's return not found. If we close that and press return, even if we drag that down, you'll see most of our values are not found apart from the 24th of June, 2024. And that's because that is an exact match. All the other dates that we have are not an exact match for the start of our period. So we need to use the next argument inside the X lookup function. For the match mode, we're going to use minus one. This means it's an exact match or the next smallest item, minus one. And then when we commit that and drag that down, you see we now get the correct month numbers. So the 19th of January, 2024, will fall into 
period five, the period that starts on the 25th of December and goes to the 22nd of January. Now we can continue with the same logic as we had before. We will divide that by three and then we can round up. So we'll round up and we'll do that to zero decimal places. That now allows us to calculate our quarter numbers correctly for a non-standard calendar. Now, if you want to, you can use VLOOKUP, you can use index match, but in this scenario, we've used XLOOKUP. So there are other formulas available that you can use. And that's it. That's how we can calculate the quarter number based on a date. It doesn't matter if our year end is aligned to the calendar year or not, or even if we have a non-standard calendar. Excel can handle all of those scenarios. We just need to adjust how we get the month number so that it meets with our scenario. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.